Greetings! I'm glad you've joined me to watch this um, voiceover PowerPoint presentation. What I'd like to go over, which can directly relate to your course syllabus, is the CBC and what it means and how I can explain to you what a fishbone diagram is. Hopefully you will uh, memorize this tool and utilize it on standardized exams, tests, HESIs, um, what have you in nursing school. Uh, this, this lecture portion is uh, definitely meant for the RN student. Um, it is useful in the PN program as well. All right, so let me just prepare what I have for you. I'm just getting to my related chapter. And up till this point, you may have not heard of what the fishbone is, uh, what it means, but I hope to explain that to you in a, in a deeper realm that you can directly correlate to the nursing concepts uh, presented to you in your syllabi. So talking about the CBC or a complete blood count, we need to know the elementary portion of this. What exactly does the CBC represent what it means? Well, as the slide depicts, it is collected through a vene puncture or a blood draw, as we know it. it, can be collected by the nurse or by the lab. Either way, it still makes its way down to the laboratory and is collected in a vial and then put into a centrifuge container. As it spins, the centrifuge segregates, separates what is in the vial, meaning we have plasma in the vial, we have white blood cells, platelets, red blood cells, and as you can see, the centrifuge adds a way to separate it. It has to do with the weight and gravity, okay? But in there, you'll find they may get a differential count, meaning you ever heard of a CBC with diff? D-I-F-F. -F. A CBC with diff means they're getting a differential basis or diagnosis uh, dependent on what is found in the blood product. So, for example, CBC with differential, you will be able to see eosinophils, neutrophils, band cells, red blood cells, lymphocytes, and monocytes. You're going to meet the fills in there. And the fills are very important as far as immunity and bodily function. It even can relate to certain cancers. So it's important to be able to differentiate the difference and the function of each one of the components or elements of blood. Another way that you can separate blood cells is by a blood smear. Okay, so let's continue. So what's included in a CBC with differential? You're going to notice that there is red blood cells, there is hemoglobin, hematocrit, we can get out of there, mean corpuscular volume, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. Now this is down to the pathophysiology level, and this relates to your provider or practitioner will be looking for certain types of anemia with finding and and interpreting the mean corpuscular volume. Okay, meaning are they going to have a macrolytic anemia or a microlytic anemia? Okay, it has to do with the size and average of the red blood cells and hemoglobin. Remember, oxygen molecules ride on the disc like shape that has a little indent on the red blood cells, oxyhemoglobin. If we have a decrease in our red blood cells, how do you think the patient will present objectively regarding an oxygen saturation? Their O2 level will be decreased. If they don't have enough red blood cells to carry enough oxygen on the back of them, oxyhemoglobin, again, they present, they could present with hypoxia. Okay. <clears throat> what else are you going to find in here? These are common abbreviations. You can make cue cards, flashcards on these. Okay. Um, white blood cells relate to the white blood cells, WBCs. Okay, these are a mature form of neutrophils. Right. 
so a CVC with differential, as I was saying, this is this breaks down the elements of the blue. Here's an introduction to the fills and some of the monocytes. Now, a neutrophil is an immature white blood cell. Can you guess where they're produced from? They're produced from the yellow bone marrow. They're also called leukocytes. Think about certain nursing concepts that you may have heard about, leukocytosis, leukopenia, penia meaning decrease, tosis meaning over, over do, um, an increase, okay? Your neutrophils, they last about seven hours in the blood, right? Think about this. If you get a common cold, how long are you sick for? You're sick for about a week, right? Until you recover, hopefully normally. OK, that has to do with our immunity and how long these neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils last. Now, I would like to explain basophil function. OK, they have an infl inflammatory response and the rationale why they have an inflammatory response to the body is that they carry the weapon of histamine. Just picture basophils walking around surveillancing the entire body and then all of a sudden they discover an invader or a compromise in the body meaning like a laceration or a cut or an immune response they will fire off hemoglobin uh they will fire excuse me they will fire off histamine histamine will create the inflammatory response that's why we take benadryl it is an anti-histamine decreases inflammation how can you tell if an asthmatic is, is acutely and objectively in an asthma attack? Well, your doctor may order a CBC with differentials, and he's ho he or she is hoping to interpret the basophils. If they're elevated, we know that there is an inflammatory response or there is um, an allergen okay, that has triggered an immune response. Now you have eosinophils. Think about a parasitic infection, those would be elevated. And again, your neutrophils, they will be elevated in the form of white blood cells or a left shift. I'll get into what a left shift means very shortly here. A monocyte, they can go in and they can destroy invader cells, viruses, bacteria, mostly bacteria. Your B lymphocytes, these are your antibodies. They like to make a copy of a foreign invader to mimic them and they will kill the foreign invader. Same thing with T lymphocytes. They can also do phagocytosis, okay, or lysis of the invaders. Here's the granular team, okay, you're going to have a granular and granular, but let me explain granular right now. So these are the components of the leukocyte family, okay. Neutrophils, they last about seven to 14 days, okay? They are the main ones. They're immature now, that's why they're so short in this picture, but they're going around and they are getting rid of the bacteria, mostly bacteria, okay? Consuming, eating them. Again, your basophil, look at him over there with that histamine. He's ready to fire off and, and, and start with the inflammatory response. What does this do? This dilates blood vessels to get more blood and blood components to the area of compromise, okay? Sounds like inf inflammation, absolutely. Think about when you bump your, your bump your, let's say your shin on a table, right? Like a coffee table and it gets a bump and it gets red and it gets hot. Thank basophils for that one because they are bringing everybody else to the party uh, related to the histamine causing vasodilation. Okay, eosinophils, again, they're going to amplify that allergic response, mostly parasites like a tapeworm, for example. Okay, now let's go into a left shift. A left shift is a CBC with differential. Let's say the patient is acutely sick, right? And we've got these circulating mature white blood cells, but the infection is so high, the invaders are so massive in the system that we need more soldiers to fight. So what happens, there's a signal to the yellow bone marrow to release and the kidneys in some cases to release neutrophils, which are immature. 
Okay, once we see an increase in neutrophils, we are shifting to the left. Okay, that is acute infection. That's the reason why we get sick. What it, like, for example, common cold, and then we get better. And then what do we see during that acute infection phase? We see an increase in white blood cells. Your white blood cells, depending on your textbook, but your textbook says 5 to 10 for white blood cells. Some clinical environments you may be in, say, 6 to 11. Again, it's not uh, a major uh, differentiation of lab values, okay? So that's, that's why. Acute infection will raise white blood cells, increase neutrophils. Therefore, talking about that left shift that's going to happen, you may hear a provider or another nurse say left shift. They have an acute infection going on or, or possibly even autoimmune, but normally it is acute infection. Well, that's one of the ways that he, they can even segregate sepsis and see what's going on with sepsis, okay? What is sepsis, right? Sepsis is where you've got an infection you have vasodilation. Again, thank you, Basophil, for making the vasodilation happen. But what happens? Okay, we've got arterial vasodilation. Less, more, when it widens, when the artery widens, the volume decreases. Now you're going to see a drop in blood pressure and an elevation in heart rate because the heart is now, okay, compensating for the low blood pressure, trying to to shunt blood to the vital organs, the brain, the heart, the brain, the heart, okay? When this happens, we should be looking at a CBC with differential. We should be anticipating fluid, okay? We need fluid recovery because more volume is more pressure. To, we need to get homeostasis regulated again, okay? Bring the person back to homeostasis. Regain health and wellness. Get rid of infection. Antibiotics need to be on board. They may, they're gonna, you should expect a blood culture before antibiotics, okay? We need a culture before we give antibiotics so we can identify the, 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 the invading factor first, okay? What type of infection is it? Do they need a broad spectrum? Do they need something specific, okay? So if we can get those to the lab and anticipate those orders, we already know how to plan our day and have time management on our side. Sepsis alert is nothing to mess around with. That's something that you need to take care of immediately. You should expect a lactic acid. If it's above two, that is another objective me uh, uh, measurement of sepsis. Roll in here. This explains my left shift, uh, not my left shift theory, but the left shift theory to you. Okay, so meaning left shift, you have an increase in, in new 845, I'm told. With the dean? Mm. No, no, sorry. Excuse me for that. Um, so you have an increase in neutrophil maturity where it is shifting to the left. That is an objective measurement that, hey, we've got all these band cells releasing now. What's going on in the body? Okay. You know that pus that you see when you are doing, um, when you are uh, doing wound care, you may see what we call pus. We will no longer call that pus. You are being groomed to be professional nurses. It is called drainage, okay? And that's actually the parts of the white blood cells, among other blood elements and components that have gone to the battlefield of the wound and died, okay? We want to use all our senses when assessing a wound and keep our lab work in, in mind, okay? We need to look at um, without getting into a tangent or a whole lecture on wounds, I just want you to know that the, the drainage in there is blood cells, white blood cells and its components. Let me introduce you to the fishbone model. The fishbone is a way to um, memorize a CBC and its values. This is a shorthand diagram. Some people call this the skeleton or the fishbone. This is a quick and easy way when you're on on the job or you're, you've been granted access to an exam and you're able to start and then you can write down uh, some things that are in your memory. So here, if you see the setup here, this doesn't change no matter what college you go to or what site website you look at. This is called the CBC fishbone. 
it has your white blood cells to the left and your platelets to the right. Hemoglobin on top and then hematocrit. For this, you need to know that your white blood cells are 5 to 10. You need to know that your platelets are 150 to 400 or 450 depending on the reference book that you're looking at. Again, doesn't vary by much. And then of course your male and female hematocrit and hemoglobin. Okay. So that is that is paramount to know. So I, I'd expect um, that you make cue cards on this or memorize it because this this will help. All right, there is a short and sweet video that you're more than welcome to watch. I will not play it on this one. Again, this was a short intro to uh, CBC and what the fishbone is and a brief explanation on a left shift.